Good day. My name's Gareth Tucker. I'm the Senior Deputy Head here at Somerset College and the Director of the Cambridge Programme. This is a brief walk through the Cambridge Information Meeting presentation. So Somerset College was founded in 1997, makes us uh, roughly 27 years old at the moment. We're an independent co-educational school situated on a beautiful estate in the winelands of the Western Cape. We are 20 minutes away from the closest uh, international airport, Cape Town International Airport. And as I mentioned, they're right in the middle of the winelands of the Western Cape. Right, um, Somerset College offers IEB schooling from grade triple naught up to matric, that's age four, up to age 18, as well as the Cambridge A-level program, which we run parallel to grade 11 and grade 12. At Somerset College, we also have boarding available for both boys and girls in the Cambridge program and an IEB program starting from age 14 up to age 18, that's grade eight to grade 12. So here at Somerset College, the Cambridge program that we offer is the Cambridge International AS and A-Level. This is not to be confused with the A-Level, the Edexcel A-Level curriculum, which is offered by Pearson International. There are a number of A-Level curricula uh, available around the world. The two which tend to be most common in South Africa is Cambridge International and then to a smaller degree, the Edexcel. Okay. The Cambridge International AS and A-Level qualification is accepted in most countries around the world. And everything that we do, the curriculum is set by Cambridge and the exams are set and marked by Cambridge as well. Right, to give you an idea of the students that we've had come through the Somerset College program, which started in 2015. So this is our 10th year that we've been running it. We've got a number of students who go from AS through to the full and complete the full A-level. In fact, the vast majority of our AS cohort go on to do their full A-level, and I'll explain the reasons for that now. You'll see the number of students that we've got there. These are some of our top performing students in 2022 and 2023, October, November exams, and you'll see there are a number of students that have got four A-levels, and some have got three A-levels, and you can see the results that they've been getting. There's also something called the Outstanding Cambridge Learner Awards, okay, and these are the awards that are given to those students who come either first in their country, top in their country, or top in the world. And since we've started in 2015, we've had a number of students who are either top in the world or top in the country in various subjects across the board. Right, so how do we run Cambridge here at Somerset College. So remember, as I mentioned at the beginning, Cambridge is an IEB school. Now, IEB is not to be confused with IB. IB being the International Baccalaureate. IEB stands for Independent Examinations Board. It is a South African curriculum. It is written mostly by independent schools in South Africa and a couple of schools um, beyond our borders like Namibia. Okay, so being an IEB school means that we obviously cater for IEB students and we write the IEB exams and the trick. So a student coming into the Somerset College Senior School, which is start at age 14, they come and they do grade 8, grade 9, 10, 11, and then grade 12. And this grade 12 is more commonly known as matric. And at the end of grade 12, they write the school leaving examinations, the first set of school leaving examinations in South Africa the IEB examinations to get their matric qualification or what is known as the National Senior Certificate, the NSC. Students who, who attend government schools tend to write the CAPS exams, okay, and the CAPS exams follow the same route. They go through from grade 8 to grade 12. They write a different set of examinations roughly on the same curriculum, and they also end up with a grade 12 or a matric, also known as the NSC, and that's what our universities then accept as a school leaving certificate and then entrance into into university. Right. What we've offered here at Somerset College is to have a parallel program where we've introduced the Cambridge AS and A level program. 
which runs parallel to grade 11 and grade 12. In other words, students who have completed a South African grade 10 may join our AS level program. Okay, that means roughly around about the age of 16. Students who have completed a GCSE or equivalent at an international school can also join our AS level program. So we take a number of students and from around the world who come join us having done a GCSE or equivalent qualification and they come join our AS program here and that AS then takes them into a full A level in the second year. So it is a two year program the same as it would be in the UK and what makes it different to many schools in South Africa is that the AS is run parallel to grade 11 and the following year the second year also known as the A2 year is run parallel to grade 12. That means students completing the Cambridge program here at Somerset College will finish with an international A level at the same time that they would have finished with their local grade 12 qualification. It must be noted that the AS level is seen by our universities as the equivalent to grade 12. So the AS is seen as the equivalent to grade 12. It does depend on the number of subjects that a student has taken at that AS for that to, to, to happen. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But essentially, the student who has completed the correct number of subjects and has got the correct scores in those exams can attend a South African university, having essentially completed a grade 12 or the equivalent of a grade 12. Right. We will talk a little bit more about that later on. But I must note at this point as well that the AS level, while it may be accepted by some universities in the in the USA, is not accepted by many universities in the UK or in Europe. So if you're looking to go to the UK or Europe, then a full A level is required. In fact, there are not many schools that even do AS level examinations in the UK. They all go straight through to A level, and I'll I'll explain how that works in a moment. Because we follow the Cambridge International program, it means that we can we can host the Cambridge program as a staged route. So we can run it as a staged route. Now, what that means is that we can break it up over two years. Now, an A level in the UK, if you'd finished your GCSEs and you go to an A level college or a school that offers A level, then what a student in the UK would normally do would choose three, possibly four subjects in their first year, and then do those subjects for two years and write all the exams for those four, three or four subjects at the end of the second year. So students starting A levels, for example, in the beginning of 2025 would write all the exams at the end of 2026 to get their A level qualification in those subjects that they've done. Right. Now, the reason why I'm saying three or four subjects is because they're generally European and UK based universities do prefer three A-levels, so they require at least three A-levels. There are some universities that will take two, but they're very few and far between. There are also universities that would require four A-levels. So we're talking universities such as Oxford and Cambridge who are looking for a little bit more from their students. So that's just something to take into account. Right, so as I said, they would then do all those subjects for two years and they'd write all the exams at the end. We follow a stage route. What that means, is that we write the first set of exams at the end of the first year. So the first year is known as AS, stands for Advanced Subsidiary, and we would then require our students to do four or five subjects. Now, why I say four or five subjects, it depends on the subject combinations, and it also depends on their previous history. In other words, have they got GCSEs, or are they coming in with a grade 10? And I will speak to each family who comes into the Cambridge program, and we will discuss individual requirements and that is where we will finalize the number of subjects. Right. So our AS program is offered parallel as I mentioned parallel to grade 11. Okay so the A the students in the AS year are essentially seen as grade 11 students in our school and that means that they are they go on the grade 11 camp they do everything that grade 11 students would do they have the same opportunities that grade 11 students would do so in other words applying for leadership positions in the school being heads of portfolios and everything that comes with that right 
when they get through to the second year, more fondly known as the A2, they are then seen as grade 12 students. And grade 12 students, that's, we are talking about final year students, matric students. And then they get the various privileges that come with being a grade 12 student. And they also get to attend the final valedictory service, for example, and the award ceremonies and the matric dances and the things that come with being a final year student at Somerset College. But we do try and keep the Cambridge and IEB students integrated as much as possible. So a student coming in, whether they are in grade 10 or they come to us from outside, will be placed in tutor groups, which currently have IEB students in them. So they will get to meet the IEB students. The timetable that we offer, the times of the Cambridge classes and the times of the IEB classes are exactly the same. So the break times are the same, the lunch breaks are the same, the assembly times are the same, which means that IEB and Cambridge students can still get together during their breaks, but they will just go to different classes. And I'll mention more about those classes shortly. But so while we do offer the Cambridge program, parallel to the IEB program, the IEB program is the more dominant one. And at the moment, we currently have roughly three IEB students to one Cambridge student in grade 11 and in grade 12. Right, so let's talk about this quickly. So this first year, we write exams at the end of the first year. So these exams will cover the work that we've covered during that first year. And those are known as the AS exams. At the end of the second year, students will take generally three, possibly four, as you would have seen in those results earlier. They will take four subjects and they'll write exams in those subjects. The, those three or four subjects will be a continuation of these subjects. So in other words, a student will take maths at the AS level and then carry on and do maths at the A level. They would write in mathematics two exams here at the end of the first year, and then they would write two exams at the end of the second year. Those four exams, their results get added together, and it's equally weighted between the two sets of exams. And that qualification, or that result then, gives them an A-level qualification. So remember I said that in the UK they would write all the exams at the end. The student in the UK would write all four exams at the end of the second year. So because we do it as a stage route, they write two exams at the end of the first year, two exams at the end of the second year, and those then make up the four exams to give you an A-level qualification. It is important to note that the two sets of exams are equally weighted. So it's not a matter of studying more for the last exam to try and get a better result. You need to study for both sets of exams. Okay, now remember that this set of exams here is then seen as giving the student a qualification, the AS qualification, which is equivalent to a grade 12 qualification in South Africa, not overseas. Possibly some universities in the US, and possibly some universities in Scotland or Wales, but generally, this is seen as only a school leaving qualification in South Africa for our universities. Which begs the question then, why do students do A-level? Well, the A-level gets you preferential entry into universities. It does make it a little bit easier. The skills that students learn during this A2 year is incredible and helps them achieve a lot better at university. And then also is obviously required for international study. Right, let's look at the Cambridge classroom. So the Cambridge classes are taught completely separately from IB classes. I mentioned that the timetable, the timing is the same. So if we start teaching at 7.30 in the morning, both Cambridge and IB will start at 7.30 in the morning. Okay, but the classes are, are taught completely separately. We may have teachers that teach across IB and Cambridge, but we do not have IB and Cambridge students in one class at any time. Notice that the universities do not um, accept a combined qualification. So we can't do, say, English and IB and Maths in Cambridge and try and put that forward as a final result. You either need to do all IB or all Cambridge. Right, our subjects here are taught by trained, experienced teachers. So we've been doing this for 10 years now. This is our 10th year. And my teachers are experienced at what they're doing. They've been doing it for a while and they are well trained and they know what is required. 
In the Cambridge classroom, students have to demonstrate understanding and a core knowledge of the subject as well as think critically. That's what that line says. But they are also asked to construct arguments and evaluate evidence. Again, that tends to be the same as what is required in IB, but the difference in the Cambridge classroom is that it goes to a much deeper level. Right, students will be required to work independently and learn to collaborate with one another so that means that they need to work outside of the classroom that does not mean self-study and they need to be able to form study groups and work with their peers if they're going to try and reach a successful outcome right so having said that there is a lot of similarities or there are a lot of similarities rather between IAB and Cambridge okay the aim of the IAB and some colleges are very similar to that of the Cambridge International Education. And that is why the Cambridge program has managed to fit into what we do as an IB school so well over the last 10 years. The big difference between Cambridge and IB is that in Cambridge, the topics are explored to a much deeper level, therefore requiring more insight from students. The volume of work is as a result much greater, which requires more dedication and a greater responsibility from the student. Remember that because the AS is seen as the equivalent to grade 12 and we do the AS in one year, whereas to get to grade 12 from grade 10, you've got two years, grade 11 and grade 12, it means that this is an accelerated program, which means that in the class, teachers cannot constantly go back and reteach work where students are falling behind. The students have to work independently. They've got to keep working and they've got to make sure they keep up with us. This is why I'm saying it requires more dedication and a greater responsibility from a student. Okay, if they find that they are falling behind or they don't understand, they have to be proactive and go to the teachers and get help after school or do extra reading or research after school. So it is seen as an accelerated program. And it is an accelerated program, even compared to what they do in the UK. Because in the UK, the fourth term of the first year, where we write exams, they would be teaching. So we lose six to seven weeks of teaching time in that fourth term because of the examinations. Right, so even compared to the UK A-level system, this is an accelerated program. But it, as you can see from our results, it can be done, it is done, and we cater for, for that being an accelerated program. But it does require that students who choose this program are focused and dedicated and responsible. All right, so having said that, the Cambridge program is not a soft option. Okay, as it says there, students who choose to follow this route will be expected to work harder, more independently, be more focused and engaged than they have been before. Right, even if students come to us from having done GCSEs or IGCSE, okay, the AS is a big jump up from the GCSE. It still requires dedication from students to do that. Right, it makes sense for students who have done the GCSE or IGCSE to come and join the Cambridge program because it, it follows on and it's the same, the work, the curriculum follows on and it's examined in the same way but the level to which it's examined or the level to which it's taught is going to be a lot deeper than a GCSE. Remember that GCSE in the UK is a school leaving year, not only in the UK, a number of countries around the world, but um, and because it's a school leaving year, those exams are set at a certain level, and sometimes the AS requires a little bit more than that. So I suppose the question is, who joins the Cambridge program? Well, as I say, we've been doing this for 10 years and we've had students join the Cambridge program for a number of reasons. So these are the four most common ones. Generally, they are students who are looking for more of a challenge at school. So these are the really high-flying academic students who are looking to be challenged and are looking for something which is going to be a little more fulfilling in that regard. Okay. They are also interested in keeping the options of international study open. So there are a number of students who, who may go study at Stellenbosch or UCT, but they want to keep the option open of going overseas. There's also students who follow the Cambridge program, have a very good idea of where they want to go in terms of future study. So in the IB, you would normally do six subjects plus life orientation uh, in, in matric, which I suppose gives you a little bit more scope 
but in Cambridge you would be you would pare that down to three subjects, which means that you need to have a very good idea of what you're going to go study further, because you're going to be focusing your attention just on those three subjects. All right, then the other people who come into the Cambridge program generally joining us from other international schools, so they've been doing GCSE or similar and want to continue in the same vein. And that makes perfect sense. So a student who's done their GCSE, it certainly makes sense for them to come join us in the Cambridge program and in the AS program. Okay, because then we know that the curricula follows on because Cambridge has set their curriculum and they know what's happening in GCSE and follows on directly to AS. All right. Why people should not follow the Cambridge program? Okay, first of all, some students believe that if they do Cambridge, that's enough to get them into international universities. It is not enough just to do Cambridge. You still need to achieve good results. If you look at the universities which require um, Cambridge results or Cambridge qualifications overseas, they will be asking for something like AAB or something like that. That means that they need you to have done three subjects with A's in two of them and a B in a third. Right, so they are still looking for top results in those subjects. Right, the next thing is then to realize that it is an accelerated program, as I've mentioned, because we complete two years essentially in one year. That means that it is not easy. It does require hard work from the outset. It is not something that you're going to have a lot of time to get used to. Okay, so students have to be working from the beginning. So a student who comes in thinking that it's going to be easy because they've only got to do fewer subjects or something like that, they will not find the success that they're looking for. So as the next point they mentioned, some students feel that because they're going to do fewer subjects, it's going to be easier. It is not. Remember that the subjects are done in a greater depth and a greater level. There's more teaching time in these subjects, and it requires a lot more dedication and effort. All right. Also, remember that the Cambridge examinations, that's your final result, what you do in the exam. There's no year mark. In the IEB, for example, 25% of your final metric score is made up of year marks. In Cambridge, there are no year marks. So if you suffer from examination anxiety, then Cambridge is probably not the best option for you. What I like to say to my students who are looking to do this is that if there's any doubt, if you're worried about joining the Cambridge program, if you have doubt, that's generally a good indication that this is not for you. In other words, you should know that this is what you want to do. All right. So this takes us on to what makes a successful Cambridge student. Okay, so a successful Cambridge student should have a goal in mind. They should know what they're doing and they should be focused on achieving that goal. So as I mentioned just now, different students have different reasons for doing Cambridge. But whatever reason they choose, that has to be good enough to pull them through when the going gets tough and the going will get tough. And because they're the ones doing the work, it is not up to parents to make that decision for them. I tell all my new students coming in to write on a big piece of paper that they stick up on their wall in their bedroom to write up their reasons for doing Cambridge. And that reason needs to be good enough to pull them through when it, times are tough. Okay, and times will get tough because they're going to start feeling the pressure as we go through the year. Right, the successful Cambridge student also should be able to work independently outside the classroom without teachers chasing them up and telling them what to do. Okay, this does not mean self-study. It means that a student cannot sit in a class. So if a student sits in my physics class, for example, and we discuss something, I expect them to go read up on that topic in the afternoon, even if it's just 20 minutes, just to go, go through the textbook, go through that section of the textbook, um, look it up on YouTube, Google it, Khan Academy, whatever it may be, just to get a different way, a different point of view, and just to cement the understanding. In Cambridge, the biggest thing is understanding, not rote learning. They need to understand the work and be able to apply it to different situations. So a student who's not prepared to do that after school, and I mean every afternoon, then they are going to find this difficult. This then leads to them being more engaged in class. Okay, If they've done their reading and they've done their research and they've looked up this work, they would have more to, to offer in the class the following, following day because what they've done is they've read up on it so they'll be able to say 
that, that they've read this, um, this point is different, that point is different. And they'll be able to discuss any theories that they came up with and argue with their peers, offer various opinions, but they must be engaged in class. Okay, so the student just sits at the back of the class expecting knowledge and understanding to soak into them. Okay, they're going to sit there like a wallflower. That doesn't work. They cannot do that. They have to be engaged. So these students simply fall behind, okay, and eventually they end up struggling tremendously to try and catch up. Okay, also, a Cambridge student must be able to prioritize and deal with pressure. There will be pressure. And there will be times when there's, when there's less pressure, but there will be times when there's great pressure, and they need to prioritize and manage their time effectively. They need to take responsibility for their studies and not blame others. And they need to remain focused on their goals, and that's going to give them the best chance of succeeding. Okay, now this does sound like it's all work and no play, and that's not what it is. Okay, a successful Cambridge student, you'll say, you'll see I mentioned um, it's good at time management. So we do expect students to still take part in sport. They don't have to. And that's because of the practical nature of some subjects which require afternoon attendance. But we do try and encourage students to take part in sports, to actually have something other than just staring at books and studying all day long. Okay, so we are looking for a balanced lifestyle. But the thing is that time management and being able to prioritize is very, very important. All right, let's talk about university access. Okay, so I'll first talk about uh, local universities. So South African universities do accept the Cambridge AS and A-level. Right, um, the Cambridge students do need to apply for something called a, a, an exemption certificate, a matriculation <coughs> exemption certificate. This is issued by USAF, University of South Africa, and there's a small cost associated with that, but this is something that a student uh, can apply for once they've completed their AS or their A-level exams, depending on the subjects that they completed and whether they actually qualify for the certificate at that point. So some students qualify to attain the certificate at the end of the AS year, which is generally what we aim for for every student, and others will get it only at the end of the A-level year. Right, students who have completed their A-levels are viewed favorably by South African universities. There are universities such as Pretoria has openly stated that they want A-level students because they are at the top of their game. They're beyond a grade 12 student in terms of their subject knowledge. They tend to stay at the top of the Dean's Demeritus and they've finished their degree in the required length of time. And that is from the university themselves. So students who have done their A-levels do tend to perform better at university. Remember that the A-level, that, that second year, the A2 year, is, is seen as a higher than a grade 12 qualification, and that is why. So the A-level students have certainly learned a lot more in terms of time management, responsibility, just you know, developing a work ethic that then allows them to perform a lot better at university level. Right, so it does say that to receive matriculation exemption, a full matriculation exemption in South Africa, students required to offer two languages. But if you've only got one, then you can end up with a conditional exemption. So it's not necessary to have two if you're an, a, um, a student from the UK or anywhere else. Okay, then we can arrange for you to get a conditional exemption, but you still need to complete the required number of subjects that, that you need to replace that language with another subject. But I will talk to, to, to each family and each student individually regarding that. Right, here's the various ways in which we can get matriculation exemption. There's um, at the end of doing your AS where you need five subjects. Remember that these symbols here are minimum grades required. So if a student gets their matriculation exemption, they need four subjects at AS level and one at GCSE. This is a minimum requirement. So you need to get a D for the A's, for the AS subjects, and a C for the GCSE. Okay, these again are minimum requirements. They're not going to get you into university. They just get you a certificate that says you can apply to go to university. That's what the matriculation exemption certificate is. It just simply says you can apply to go to university. I notice that this only applies to South African universities. So a student who wants to go study overseas, okay, and they know that upfront, then 
they don't need to follow these rules necessarily. But I do try and encourage all our students, both AS and A-level, to keep as many options open as possible. So it's not a bad thing to, to get your matriculation exemption criteria sorted and to get the criteria to go internationally sorted. Okay, all right. Um, the subjects that we offer, that's the list over there. You'll see that there's not a lot. Um, Cambridge tend to offer, I think they've got about 52 subjects at present. We don't offer all 52 subjects, obviously. We offer subjects which are known as facilitating subjects in some countries. But these are the ones that are going to get students into universities, both here in South Africa and overseas. Now, some people would ask why I don't have more art subjects. Well, the only real art subjects that's missing would be, would be drama and then things like ICT and business. Now, those are subjects which, um, although they are subjects offered by Cambridge, they are not necessarily accepted by universities around the world. Okay. And they are not seen as facilitating subjects. So drama is, is for example, a Cambridge subject, but is not accepted by our universities in South Africa for matriculation exemption. So remember, my local students who choose to do the Cambridge program, they are choosing to do that. They do not have to do the Cambridge program. They can stay in IAB. And remember that to go to an international university, you don't have to have Cambridge. You can go to some international universities with an IAB qualification. Right, so those are the subjects that we find are universally accepted around the world. The only exception to that, and I must mention that at this point, is art. Okay, so we do offer art as an A-level, but... And it's only at A level, we don't offer AS art. Okay, but we have to remember that in Europe, art is not seen as an academic subject. So, a student who wants to go study a BSc, for example, in Holland, cannot do maths, physics, and art. Art is not seen as a academic subject. Right, so that cannot make up one of your three A levels if that's what you want to go do. If you want to go study art, that's a different thing. But if you want to go do a BSc of some kind, biological studies or anything along those lines, art is not accepted. Right, just talking still about our local universities. Um, you'll see that th this is just an example of how our universities actually view Cambridge students. You'll see the AS level, and the A at AS level is seen as the equivalent to 90, 90% 90 at grade 12. Okay, so a student who applies with an A will be will be viewed as getting 90% in the trick, essentially, and a B would be 75. And you can see it's sort of in line with what the South African National Senior Certificate is. So a 7, for example, for the National Senior Certificate is between 80 and 100%, the old A symbol. And you can see that the A for AS level is midway through that range, and so is the B, and so is the C. So those symbols pretty much on par with what is offered or what is achieved in grade 12. A level is where the difference kicks in. If you have a look at this, for example, the C at A level is viewed as an 80 or a 7 or an A in matric. So a student who gets a C at A level that is viewed as being a A for university entry in year in South Africa. Obviously, if you're going overseas, then those are the symbols as they are. Right. So. I did mention a little bit about international universities just now. I just want to reiterate that students who want to go study overseas do not have to do Cambridge. Cambridge is obviously required by many universities. So Cambridge themselves and Oxford, okay, would generally want a Cambridge qualification. Um, European universities, especially in, in Holland, for example, would want a Cambridge qualification, Cambridge A-level. And in fact, there are some universities that want a certain number of subjects. So let's just chat about those here quickly. Right, so to get a full A-level qualification with metric exemption, students are, will be required to offer these five subjects, so the minimum four on the A's and one at GCSE. Okay, so that's what we've spoken about before. Okay, it's noted that while the majority of universities in the UK accept three A-levels, there are some that require four A-levels. So students who are looking to go study overseas, I recommend that they contact the universities they're interested in and find out how many A-level subjects they require. For local universities, 
a student wanting to do anything involving a BSc, so whether it be engineering or computer science or medicine or anything like that, need to offer both AS Physics and AS Chemistry. Notice that's physics and chemistry both in the first year only. They don't have to do it a full A-level, but just at AS level. Fine, so students who want to go to medicine, for example, generally end up doing maths, chemistry, and biology to A-level, because that is the requirement for international study, but then they will add AS physics in, in the first year. All right. Um, some local universities do require six subjects for certain courses. So, for example, UCT's Commerce faculty have now said that they want six subjects, and that would be one GCSE and five ASs. I notice that that is more than what is required for matriculation exemption. That is why I said matriculation exemption requirements are the minimum requirements. So students looking to do the Cambridge program must consider what they want to go do one day, where they want to go do it, and make sure that they get the correct number of subjects, they choose the correct number of subjects up front. Trying to pick up subjects towards the end is very, very difficult. Okay, and as I mentioned just now, if you're going to Holland, the requirements in Holland for A-level is to have three A-level subjects and three other subjects at GCSE or AS level. Okay, which means six subjects in total. So if students are looking to go study in Holland, now I'm mentioning Holland quite a bit. The reason why is we have a large number of students looking to go study in Holland over the last few years. That seems to be quite attractive for a number of students. Okay, so please just note that. And the students choosing to do AS Chemistry, because AS Chemistry is probably the largest um, volume of work to finish in one year, we do have an online bridging course just to make sure that everybody's starting off the same level. Okay, and we run that just before the beginning of the first term in January of each year. There's a cost of the bridging course, which will be added onto your school fees at the time. Right, talking about costs, uh, the cost of the Cambridge program here at Somerset College is, first of all, I must note that the benches are not accepted for those people not in Somerset College. There are some families in the school who have got the benches, which give them a certain discount each year, and we do not accept, accept these debentures in the Cambridge program, which means that if you do have debentures, you can either transfer them to a younger child, or you can sell them on to another family, or you can donate them to the school. Uh, the current Cambridge fee for this year, 2024, is 158000 roughly for the year. Okay, it is a little bit more than the IEB. So students who are currently in grade 10 who choose to do the Cambridge program, you'll find that we'll ask you to sign an addendum to your contract, which will then include the, the new higher fees. These fees are slightly higher because we pay for everything in pounds, and currently the rand pound exchange rate is not helping us at all. Right, the examination costs are included in that 158,000 rand, so there's no extra cost for, exa for exams unless the student wants to rewrite or remark. Those, those costs are then extra. Practical costs are included, so those students who are doing practical subjects like biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, those are all included in that fee. Boarding is not included, and textbooks and stationery are not included. Right, so here's a quick note about the Somerset College Cambridge Expedition Program. We have a number of students joining us from all over the world every year, and one of the issues that parents have mentioned to me is that they don't know what to do with their students during the March and June holidays. There's a two-week holiday in March and a three-week holiday in June generally, and then they need to fly them up and down, and they find that that sometimes makes things a little more expensive, or it just becomes a problem flying their, their children up and down at those times. So what we've done for that reason and for other reasons as well is we've associated ourselves with a company called Curiosity Company and what they've done is they've put together an expedition program for us which will see students completing four different experiences over a two-year A-level program. So remembering that the A-level program is two years that means in March and June of the first year and March and June of the second year. Now, these experiences are not sightseeing trips. They are experiences that will take students around various parts of southern Africa where they'll learn skills, and we've arranged these, these expeditions in such a way that the skills learned in one will be built on in the following. Right, so just to give you an idea, 
of what we do and how this is going to work. Here's a brief note from the Curiosity Company, just trying to explain what the idea is and trying to start a very important skill of curiosity. Anybody wanting to know more about this program can um, contact our admissions department and speak to me and we'll go through that. All right, just to give you a brief idea of what students would do if they had to join this program, the first trip would be a Lesotho and KwaZulu Natal horseback and ocean safari. Okay, that photograph there is of our students this last year who went on that, that same safari. And then in June, the Okavango Delta in Botswana. And then March of 26, the Kruger National Park, where students will be on game drives, but they will also be doing social responsibility work in schools in that area. And then um, learning more about conservation in Namibia. And so these are amazing experiences which not a lot of people would get, which are all going to be included in one fee for the two-year course. Okay, where students or parents can sign up for at the beginning of the two-year A-level and then those costs are fixed for the next two years. All right, just to give you an idea of how it would work, there's a, a sort of a structure of the program. The costs of this can be, um, can we can chat about the costs upon request, so students or parents who are interested, or families who are interested in finding out more about this, I can let you know a little bit more. The cost currently for 2025 and 2026 is roughly the same price as one year of schooling in the UK. So we're looking at just below £40,000. All right, when I say schooling in the UK, I mean at a, at, a, at a good independent school. All right, it is also possible for students who don't join the full program to join individual expeditions as we go along, and the costs of those would then be, would be discussed closer to the time. All right. So, where to now? So, for local students, so by local students, I mean students here either at Somerset College, okay, or in surrounds, in other words, in, in South Africa. If you are a current Somerset College student, we are going to get you to write the IGCSE Afrikaans exam at the end of this year, which means that we tick that first box of getting one IGCSE subject, which means that you can then do four or five subjects at AS level quite comfortably. Okay, you can choose to write the Afrikaans examination, but not follow Cambridge for these students. I will be sending out a letter during the course of this week explaining to parents what is happening about that Afrikaans exam. Please note that if you do write the Afrikaans exam, it does not replace any current grade 10 exams, and that's because we cannot mix IEB and Cambridge. So if you choose not to do the Cambridge program, you can't replace the Afrikaans result with the Cambridge result. Right, if you are currently in grade 10 in South Africa, then what you should be doing now is working hard, achieving your best possible results, particularly in the subjects that you would intend doing in Cambridge. So note that further studies of maths or advanced program maths that used to be called APM is recommended in grade 10. If you are not doing APM in grade 10 at the moment, it means that you will find mathematics a little bit difficult next year. Um, that's because there is a statistics component, which is generally only covered in APM. And that means that you're going to have to work a little bit harder next year than a student who has done APM. So it's not impossible, but it does mean that you're going to have to be more committed and work even harder. And then, obviously, if you're looking to do mathematics and physical science, a number of physical sciences, both chemistry and physics, you should be looking at least 70% in those two subjects taking you forward. Okay, those are the subjects that you're going to be doing in Cambridge. Remember, a student who chooses to do the Cambridge program chooses to do the Cambridge program, whereas they could have continued with IB. Okay, so if you choose to do the Cambridge program, you've really got to know why you're doing this, and you've got to be committed to doing it. There is no going back after the first week or so. Once you've chosen to do Cambridge, you are there for the next two years, and that's what's going to be required of you. Right, if you're an international student and you're interested in joining us here in sunny South Africa, okay, it's an amazing opportunity to come down to Somerset College. We have a number of international students, a very large portion, almost half of my AS group is made up of international students from all over the world. And when I say all over the world, I mean all over the world. I've got from Bermuda, Mauritius, England, America, France, Singapore, 
a lot in, in Africa, uh, Dubai, UAE, Kenya, Mozambique, Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Benin. We've got students from all over the world. And I love having our international students here because they bring a completely different flavor to the, the, the class. I remember teaching a class a couple of years ago where in the class I had a boy from Azerbaijan, another boy from Russia, another boy from um, America, one from Holland, and one or two South Africans. It was an amazing experience teaching students where they've got such a fantastic background and such a difference in their backgrounds and how they all get together and work together. So it is phenomenal having these international students. So if you are coming from abroad, please do contact our admissions department. They will set up any meetings, whether they be online or in person. We can do both of those and they will take it from there. If you're writing a GCSE this year, generally you'll be writing in May, June possibly now, then that means that we will need a full set of your GCSE results or similar as we go along. But the first thing is to contact our admissions department and set up a meeting so we can start talking and just find out where we're going to go from this point on. Right, then finally, this is what I always say to my students, and I've got a big banner at the top back of my class which says this, remember your why. Remember why you are doing this. I need my Cambridge students to be motivated, to be responsible, and to do that, they need to remember why they're doing this. This needs to be co constantly in the back of their minds. Okay, right. So, thank you very much for going through this video. I know it's three quarters of an hour, but thank you very much. I hope where, where some parts are boring, you speed it up. But um, please do contact our admissions department. There's the email address, admissions at somcol.co.za. If you have any questions or if you want to make an appointment so we can chat about your personal circumstances and I can take you through it and give you the best possible advice. Or you can have a look at our website for some more information. Remember that Doing Cambridge is a choice, and I understand it's a big choice. I think it's the right choice because the Cambridge program is amazing. The curriculum is fantastic, and if I see the growth that the students go through over two years, it is absolutely brilliant. So I think it's a very good choice. I think it's a very good thing to do. I think for international students coming to South Africa and doing this here where we are, Somerset College is 20 minutes away from the local uh, international airport. Um, and boarding in available, and the number of international students we've had here in the past makes it an amazing opportunity to come through. And then obviously looking at that expedition program for those students who are looking for something a little bit more is also available. So um, please do contact our admissions department, and we'll take it from there. Right, thank you for watching.